always have to keep going to another level. So I stand on the shoulders of my successes and my trophies, but I don't sleep in the trophy room. What up, what up? My name is Lo Santonio. Welcome back to No Sleeping in the Trophy Room, season two right here on Revolt TV. And we're back with a very special guest, a great friend of mine, my brother Kaito Arujo. What up, fam? What is going on, my I'm brother? Good. How, How are you, man? Good. All right, all right. Now, I've had the pleasure of working alongside my brother Kaito for a number of years during my career. And um, he's undisputedly the youngest in charge right now, man. My brother, how you feeling? I'm good, man. I'm good. Awesome. A great weekend. Yeah. Just coming off of the uh, the Revolt Summit. Yep. That was that was that was major. That was that was a great experience. Yeah. So Gaito, there's a there's a number of places we could start, uh, but I want to start where it all started for you. You know, talk to me a little bit about how you, you know, who handed you your first camera? How did you get into photography? Like, how did that? originate you know what I mean yeah so when I f first you know noticed that I had an eye I was with my cousin Kathy and I was working at McDonald's with her mom who is my aunt and you know I was like 16 and a half and you know I had a job and during the summer I would go over and sleep over her house for a week at a time and then I would come back home for two days and then I would go and sleep at her house for another two weeks. So during that time, um, you know, she be, she started becoming an influencer on like Instagram. So she would always just ask uh, her boyfriend to just take some pictures of her, whether it's wear, uh, using like a fashion brand. Um, this was like 20, early 2014, 2013, 2013, 2014. And you know, one day they both had to be the picture. So she was like, Kaito, do you mind taking a picture of us um, for this photo? And I was like, yeah, sure, like, whatever. So we, we go down to the train tracks and she's wearing like a Halloween costume. And, you know, I had the, she handed me the camera. And she's like, okay, so here's the settings. It's all set up. Like, all you have to do is just take the picture. Like, and I was like, okay seems pretty easy. So, you know, as we started taking the pictures, I started like on my own, just start kneeling down, taking the pictures like with an angle and, and stuff like that. And after, you know, that little 10 minute session, she's like, Gaito, like, these are amazing. Like, these are so good. Like nobody's ever took pictures of us like this. And you she remember was like, what kind of camera it was? It was like a Canon Rebel T, T2 or something, mm -hmm. you know? And I was like, I was like, oh, thanks. Like, she was like, you have an eye. And from there, I began to like, every, every weekend we'd go and shoot while I was working at McDonald's during the week, you know, 40 hours a week. On the weekends, we'd just go out and shoot pictures for fun. And then through that, um, my cousin Sean introduced me to like, just the Instagram format of like making a cohesive feed and making it look cool with the same filters. And you know, like, Early on, that was kind of cool, like just making a cohesive feed. So I began to do that, just taking pictures of like cats and taking pictures of um, scenery, signs, um, your environment, friends, my environment, you know, things that I saw every day. And after that year, I got a camera and I was playing soccer. Um, during the school year, so after the soccer games, I would go and shoot the varsity team because I was playing JV. So I, was, I would go and shoot the varsity team, and now everybody wanted a picture by Gaito. Like it was just like a thing. The basketball team wanted a picture by me. Uh, the baseball team, uh, you know, all the the swimming team. Right. So they all wanted a Gaito photo, but like you know, it was to me it was just like fun. Right. Um, so after that, I began to you know, just take photography really seriously and and started getting inspired by just different photographers. Right. Like I had a friend back home by the name of Jonah and- Shout out would, to Jonah, by the way. Shout out to Jonah. He, um, so we began to just go out to Boston where I'm from and go and just take 
street photography photos. Like street photography was a thing back then. Like he introduced me to that and you know, the, the whole community. So was Jonah one of the first people that you saw, you know, actively pursuing uh, photography? Yeah, and, and yeah, so yeah. So me and Jonah, it was like a little competition. Like he would go and shoot these like dope photos and I'd be right behind his back over the shoulder taking the same shot and his editing skills were just amazing. And then, you know, he would do his photo shoots for people in the city, I would do my photo shoots for people in the city, and like, it was kind of like me and him were like the two, the two people in the city kind of, like, just being in photography, it wasn't like a thing. How did, how did life in, in you're from Massachusetts originally, Yeah, right? in New Bedford, Massachusetts. New Bedford, Massachusetts. So, so how did New Bedford, Massachusetts influence your style of photography? There really wasn't an influence. I kind of like created the influence, I would say. Like Jonah, who is my, my really good friend, kind of influenced me to get in it. I would say the influence maybe came from like the street photography that was being, that was getting done in like New York by like Steve Sweatpants, Last Suspect, First, all those cats out there that were like on top of like, you know, that street photography in the train, the the sidewalks, like shooting those like lifestyle images that like everybody does now. Right. When did you realize, you know, was there a moment when you realized that, you know, this, this could be more than a hobby. This could be, I can monetize off this. Like, was there a certain shoot or a certain uh, interaction, conversation you had with somebody that, was, that really let you know that this could, you know, go beyond you know, just, uh, you know, perfecting your craft with Jonah and being in mm -hmm. Massachusetts. With yeah, I would say like when I was in high school and like my senior year, I started doing those shoots. I almost began doing those shoots more than actually playing in the sport. Like I was not going to practice because I had a photo shoot. Mm. So, and, and I was getting paid like $50 a shoot for like 30 pictures. Right. So like the, like that, is when I really like realized like, oh shit, like I can actually make a living off this in the future. Right. So fast forward a few years, mm -hmm. you know, we met here in Los Angeles, California. Tell me a little bit about that journey to Los Angeles. How did you get here? What was the inspiration to thinking behind that? You know, so after I, I started to perfect my craft in the street photography world and I was just out shooting all the time, you know, I had this opportunity with King Los, who's a rapper, and you know, he was like, yo, just come out and move out to LA over here and just let, let's shoot all the time. I'm about to work on my album, you know, I wanna document this. So I was like, cool, like picked up my stuff, told my mom I'm knowledge. moving to LA literally at midnight, moved out to LA the next day. Wow. Um, and you know, we went on a year run with him and just shot every single day, every single minute of his life. So tell me about your mindset, you know, making that decision to come out to, to Los Angeles. You know, there's a certain level of fearlessness that comes, you know, when making those types of decisions where you don't necessarily know, you know, what you're really in for. Yeah, so I didn't know what I was in for. And I just knew that I would probably have to be up all the time because I'm dealing with a rapper shooting in the studio till eight in the morning. And that like drove me to like, okay, that's a, that's like a pivot in my life. Like that's a, it's, this is about to be my lifestyle, but it's gonna be like on my own time. I don't have to work a nine to five. So, and I don't, and I was just beginning uh, college at a New England school of photography. And, you know, before I left there, they were all like, yo, you're like, you're really about to not go to school for photography. Like you're bugging. I was like, no, like I know I could do it without the school. So like I moved out to LA and you know, it was that. It was me sleeping on a couch, me, you know, grinding all these hours, shooting content for Los and I loved it. Like I, I was driven by that. Like, you know, there was not necessarily no money, but the opportunity to get my foot in the door and, and start to do what, honestly, what I love to do. Mm -hmm. And that's so dope, man, because, you know, people only see what you share and they only see what you show them, which essentially are the highlights. 
So I think it's important for a lot of people to hear, you know, that there's a lot of grit that goes on behind the scenes, you know, when, when you are on the come up and you're aspiring to do more. So when we met, we were at Diddy's house, you were with Ray J, and, um, you know, you definitely had this energy on you that I could just tell you were just super focused and, um, you know, you, you, you wanted more than what was appearing in front of you at the moment. So talk to me about that mindset, talk to me about that day. What was going through your mind when I see you at, at, at Diddy's house? Yeah, so, you know, I met Ray J through Los and we, he wanted me to just shoot some, some marketing photos for like his uh, scooty bike. Right. So that day we drove to Puff's house in Malibu and I didn't even have an idea that we were going to Puff's house. That day he picked me up, he was like, let's just go take some pictures and we ended up going to Puff's house. And that's, that was like maybe the third time that I've been to Puff's house and the first time I got an opportunity. We were there, um, you were there, and we began to, we were just chilling. So you were there and we were just chilling. Um, and then all of a sudden, it was like this perfect moment. You know, Ray J was up by the bar. I was down um, kind of near you and I saw Puff and his daughter on the beach. And I was like, yo, this is like the perfect moment. Like, should I take out my bag? Should I take my camera out of my bag and like go take this picture and probably maybe get cussed out by Puff Daddy? Or should I just not do it? And you know, in my head, I knew the right thing was to, to do it. Cause like, you know, closed mouth. Don't get fed. Don't get fed. That's a fact. So I was like, took my camera out of my bag, went, took those pictures and it was like the perfect moment, sunset, sun setting in the back. So he was a little silhouetted with his daughter and I ran back up from the beach and me and you had a conversation. You were like, yo, you got those photos. And I was like, yeah. You were like, well, can I get them? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, shit, I have yeah. my laptop right here. Yeah. So I opened up my laptop, put it in uh, Lightroom real quick remember like i edited that up in oh, five cool. minutes yeah gave you like what five six pictures back real quick back. yeah back to back and you posted them on social media but and then from that you know when you posted on social media i remember puff came to me five minutes after and just had this talk with me that changed my life but you know from that you know looking back on that i remember like I knew where I wanted to go in life, and I knew that that was the opportunity that I was, I've been waiting for. Mm -hmm. So like, I could have just been like, in the moment and enjoying his house and enjoying the vibe, but I knew I had something that I needed to do. Right. I knew that if I shot these photos, and you know, through my lens, that he's gonna, he's gonna love it. Right. And that's why I did that. And that was the drive and the focus. Like, that was my focus is getting to him. Right. Because I knew there was an opportunity there. It's like when they say, when preparation meets opportunity, it's success. And that was the moment. Just on the topic of moments, you know, you've been, you've, um, you're responsible for showcasing so many moments. Are there any moments that, you know, that you've shot that stick out to you or that mean the most to you? I think there are definitely a lot of moments that stick out to me. One of them being the Jay-Z and Puff picture at the Rock Nation brunch 2017, you know, with where they're both standing by the window. I think that was just such a powerful moment. And when that hit the internet. Yeah, it, that went crazy. It went crazy. Yeah. And I just remember, and it wasn't even, like before it hit the internet, I knew it was big, you know, like I knew, there was a statement behind that image. And going into the Rock Nation brunch, I knew that was a story I had to tell. You know, it wasn't just like I caught the moment. Like I was looking for the moment and, and looking for it in almost like a fly in the wall perspective. Like I wasn't there in the middle of everybody just trying to gun down the photo. Like I was there flying the wall, nobody noticed me capturing and I captured that moment. This iconic candid moment. A super candid moment that almost looks like it could be set up for like, you know, an editorial piece. And that's how like my style is. Like I like, I love to capture these moments that almost look 
editorial-esque like, you know? Mm -hmm. Another moment to me is is probably the Rick Ross book cover. I think, you know, at that moment, at that time, I was just looking to do photo shoots with different artists, and this is pretty recently. Um, so I hit Rick Ross and I was just like, yo, like I wanna do a photo shoot with you. And he was like, cool, I'll be, I'll fly to you. He was in Miami, he was like, I'll fly to you. So I was like, whoa. And he was like, but I, I can only do it Thursday. And it was like Tuesday. So I was like, okay, cool. I'll set it up and let you know. I'll send you all the details. Hit my manager, had him book the studio um, and, set, and he set it up. And I hit Ross with all the details and he was like, cool. So, you know, that day I'm waiting and I'm, I'm anticipating the shoot and he was late. I was like, oh man, this might not even happen. And when he showed up three hours late, I was just like, wow, now like it's game time. Right. And I was like, I have to show, you know, I have to show him that this is, he's not just wasting his time in a way. But it was also like no stress. It was just on my time. I wasn't used to that. I wasn't used to being on my time. So like me controlling the set, me controlling the flow of the shoot, that was the first time I've ever got to do that because you know I'm used to just capturing the moment, capturing um, just the, being a fly on the wall. Now I'm like more of a director. I have to you know control the vibe and the frequency and you know make them feel comfortable in front of the lens. So um, it, it turned out great. You know, when we left the shoot, he looked at all the photos and was like, yo, this is the one. And and that stuck to me. So, he, you know, at the shoot, I was there with my friend um, who's an editor and he was digitecting that day for me by the name of Oren. And we just edited the photo right there and sent it to him like the next day. And like I re and then, you know, a, a week after he reached out to me and said, I want to use this for my book cover. And that, I was like, wow. That's crazy. That meant so much to me. I was just so happy. And not just because of, you know, it, it ended up being a book cover, but how, you know, I was proud of myself, how I controlled the shoot. You know, that's, that's definitely a big stepping stone, milestone for me. So, Kaito, you know, you're working on all these huge projects. You're working 24-7. How, how do you stay creative? How do you refresh your creative palette? How do you preserve your energy? What's something you do to, to stay inspired? Yeah, so I would say, you know, no matter how long of a day I have, when I come home, I always try to, you know, get inspired by even maybe watching Annie Leibovitz Masterclass or going on YouTube and, and, and learning. Right. Learning how to, whether it's light a studio or, um, like photography tips, you know, and seeing other people's work. So you take time, even in your time off, to still perfect the craft and be inspired yeah, by it. Yeah, because there's always, there's always room for learning. That's, that's one thing that, you know, I've learned. You know, when you first got on, obviously we're impressed by certain things and, you know, certain things that come with this lifestyle. Um, time passes things phase out, things change, you level up in life. Um, what, is the, what are some of the things that really move the needle for you right now? Like what are some of the things that impress Kaito, you know? I would say what impresses me is um, more than impressing me, what I'm feeding off is, is almost getting better and not in a sense of the access like yeah, I have access to all these celebrities and that doesn't feed me that. I would say what feeds me is, is more of the, the, the craft and the art that I'm, I'm almost getting better at, I would say. Um, more finding my style in, in the photography world um, with a purpose. Like what's my shooting purpose? You know, cause you could shoot 500 images of an artist in a room um, in an intimate moment. But when you're in that intimate space, what's the story that you're telling? That's, that's so dope, man. And there's, there's, there's a lot of levels to that. And I feel like, um, you know, I feel like you care.
deeply about the narrative that your photos carry? I definitely care about first the art. Um, the art comes first to me because, you know, you know, you grow as an artist. You grow as an artist and um, you care about what you're creating and, and how people are perceiving your images or videos, you know. So if the, if the intention and if the intention is pure, um, then that will stick with people forever. Right. Almost like this right here. Yeah. Like that you can almost, it's like naked. It's like, yeah. it's like, that's him. You don't really see Ross with, without his glasses, you know, and just the emotion is so pure and genuine in that photo. It's a simple, you know, it's a simple portrait, but to me, it, it speaks like, I feel like I can see his emotion. It, it almost, you know, and is another thing like, to me, it's like, you know what you're almost about to read. Right. You know you're gonna enter in his life just by seeing this photo. And you know, I, I just love to document with intent. That's like a, a documentation of where Ross is in his life right now. Yeah. So you talk a lot about growth and um, you know, where do you see the amazing things that you're doing right now is always the next level. So where do you see yourself in the next five years? I would say first, um, my main goal is to, you know, make to make sure that the team that's around me is well taken care of, you know, because that has like, you know, over time, I've began to realize that like a team makes you better and you make the team better. So, you know, the people that are around me, I always I always treat them as best as I can because, you know, it takes a team to win. You can't win by yourself. There's no I in team. So I think, you know, I've just seen the work progress as as my team grows. Right. A lot of new levels, a lot of new views. A lot of new views and, you know, where I see myself going the next couple of years is you know, I love what I'm doing right now and I feel happy doing what I'm doing, but you know, taking it up a notch, you right. know, walking the doors yeah. where the Yeezys shooting, whether it's shooting content for, you know, shooting a commercial or um, the next Yeezy campaign or the next um, Jerry Lorenzo campaign or the next Virgil Abloh off-white Louis Vuitton right uh, images telling that sharing that narrative my lens um, with that brand association that you know I care about I love what they're doing I would say you know if I could shoot campaign images that would be amazing if I can direct a you know, commercial for a you know a brand that connects to me and it makes sense that's what I would want to do right that's amazing and man. also still documenting people that impact my life people that you know not just celebrities people that want to make a change in life and have a certain narrative to tell that I feel like and that's that's one thing that I feel like I've I've grown in you know Capturing people is so much deeper than just taking pictures of like a celebrity. You know, there's certain quote unquote celebrities that really are out here trying to really like make a difference. And I w I'd rather photograph somebody like that or just regular people, you know, not regular people, but people that are around me in my life that, you know, have the right intention. Right. So Kaito, this is no sleeping in the trophy room. You know, this, this platform is all about motivation uh, and sharing the information with people who are aspiring to do it just like you are, or maybe even bigger. Um, but you know, they need that information, man. So what are, what are some power plays that you would share with a, with, with a young, you know, 16 year old Kaito that's, that's in Massachusetts somewhere, you know, 
watching this on YouTube, you know, looking for that inspiration, looking for that that information on how to do it, man. What's what's some gems you could drop? I would say master your art. Um, with whatever it is, if you're a songwriter, if you're a photographer, if you're a volleyball player, a soccer player, be the best that you can be. And don't worry about just trying to be famous. Like, that's not even, you know, being the best you could be is way more important than just being famous. So, that's one thing. I would say believe you could do it. You know, it sounds so uh, cliche, but like, if I didn't think that I could do it, I would never put action in play. That's the third thing, put an action in play. You know, if you say you wanna do something, really do it. Don't think that, oh, cause it's too hard that I can't do it. Like, you know, do it. So Kaito, from the beginning of your journey, uh, in, in your career to right now, there's been one constant thing, and that's love. You know, whether it's a love for, for the craft, a love for what you do, a love for who you're working with. Um, what does love mean to you, man? Love is important to me. You know, I always say like, if I don't love what I'm doing, then I don't want to do it. Um, and you know, there's another side of love where love, like, Love is back in my home base. Love is my mom. Love, you know, when, often when I'm feeling tired, I go home, you know, back to Massachusetts and I go in and give love and feel love. That's like the love that I know is, you know, my family, my cousins, my mom, my dad. Um, and that, you know, when I'm, when I'm tired, that's where I go. And I just had my mom out here we just did the Revolt Summit. At the Revolt Summit, that's right. Yeah, and this was her first time out here to LA, and that was amazing. That's dope, man. I gave your mother the biggest hug, man. I was like, I felt like I owed her something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I met her, I'm like, thank you for birthing this legend. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I think um, I think that's dope, man. Just on the topic of the Revolt Summit, you know, I got a chance to sit in on the panel with uh, you, Jonathan Mannion, Dunny, or hey, Paniche, um, and what was the young lady's name? Hannah. Hannah, and 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 Hannah, and um, you know, it, it to me, you know, it really meant a lot for me to watch, you know, you guys on the stage, man, and, and share those gems with with everybody who came to see you guys, you know, because I've obviously played the sideline, you know, during your career, and you know, it just meant a lot for me to to watch that. Um, what did that mean for you, you know, to have these people, you know, so so tuned in to to every word that you were saying and you know to have your mother there to witness the whole thing like, what, what, what did that whole experience mean to you you know oftentimes i think that what we're doing as artists is you know staying in this bubble where we create and create and create and you know it's good to also give the knowledge back and i'm young but you know there's things that i've experienced in my life that I feel like I need to share for somebody who is like me at the age of 16 that may need some inspiration or, you know, almost some direction if they're not feeling like they can do it. So that's why I like doing a panel, like, you know, I wouldn't necessarily, like I wouldn't think of doing a panel um, to just do it just for the sake of doing it, um, to be on TV or anything, but I do it, I, the reason I did that and I'm, why I'm doing this is because, you know, there's some people that need to hear some positive things in life. And, and that's why I do, you know, things like this. Yeah, and at the same time, you're also keeping it all the way transparent. We're sharing the not so positive things. We're sharing the positive things. It's just, you know, there's two sides to the coin, man. But, we, you know, life is going to serve you reality, you know, so that it's just dope to you know see. yeah and there's definitely things that i've had to overcome that people don't know right um but you know i like to share the positive things and if people have questions for me on the side i answer the questions whether you know people dm me or reach out to me you know there's definitely a lot of trials and tribulations i would say like um in in this so-called game in in my career that i've had to overcome right so we do this segment uh, for No Sleeping in the Trophy Room called Tweets is Watching. 
So I went ahead and uh, I grabbed some tweaks of yours that I felt, mm -hmm. you know, you could expand on and, mm -hmm. you know, we could just, uh, we could tap into it, man. So, so the first one I have here, you said, learning how to be master of the art. Obviously we touched on the craft, your love for what you do, mm -hmm. but when you're learning to be the master of the art, what, what were you thinking when you hit that, that post button? And like, what's, what was the thinking there? Um, learning how to be master of the art, I would say is, you know, my whole thing of, you know, what I kind of just explained is, you know, putting the art before the fame or just the in my whole intention of why I even began to start taking pictures is because I love to do what I do. And I would, so I would rather master the art of photography, of um, directing or being a good leader, or even being a good visionary. Um, and, you know, mastering the art, like being the best artist I can be through my own lens. Right. And always soaking up that information, man. Always soaking up the information, learning every single day. You know, there's always, like I didn't go to a, a school to learn. So I'm still learning every day on minor things that make me better um, to help my art. Something else you said here was break bread with those around you. Now you mentioned, you know, you, uh, you have a lot of close friends that you, that you work with and you know teamwork etc um, when you're breaking bread with those around you what, how, how important is that what does that mean the breaking bread with those around you is just like break bread with your homies you you know you bless the people that are around you because it makes them better and also you want to see the people around you win not just because bread so-called money will make you better but you want to see the people around you be successful and and i feel like sometimes you know you want to keep it in the family and you want to see your people be you want to see the people around you be able to support their families and continue their journey in life and what they aspire to be so that's why i say break bread with people around you not so-called just breaking bread with money, but going through journey, the journey of life with the people around you and growing with them. Right. That's important, man, because not not all not all form of, of payment is monetary, man. And you know, sharing life experiences, sharing knowledge, and also, you know, obviously monetary is also comes with the work, but I think a lot of people experience appreciate experience mm -hmm. and knowledge yeah in that same token so Kaito, you only get one chance to make a first impression you know when you when you get an opportunity that you really can't afford to lose you know what are some of the tricks of the trade that you would recommend somebody does you know like what's what's like the overachievers list you know to maximize an opportunity that you may only get one time yeah and, and to your point i think that list is the list you make or that I've made to like mastering my craft, right? And that's, you know, one of the things is, you know, for me staying up past 24 hours, like if I know I have to edit something, um, I'm gonna be up until I finish it. Um, whether it's coming home three in the morning four in the morning, five in the morning, I'm gonna edit till eight or when I'm done. Um, another thing is being prepared for a situation that you're gonna be in. Like if, you, if I know I have to shoot a certain type of event and I don't have, if I know I'm gonna be in a situation for an event, I'm gonna make sure I'm prepared, whether it's having the right flashes, the right lenses, um, studying which lenses is good for a scenario or if I study uh, what lens is going to be a good for a scenario and I feel like it's not 
I'm gonna go and get the lens that I'm most comfortable with or the flash that I'm most comfortable with or the camera. Cause you know, a lot of people say um, there's a certain level of cameras that you need to use to make the picture better. But at the end of the day, I feel like using a camera that's most comfortable with you um, is the most important thing. It's not really about the camera. It's how you capture these moments and also how, you know, you put your own twist in the edit. Another form of mastering your craft would be asking for help. It's, you know, it's, it's always a thing where, you know, people's egos get in the way of them growing and asking for help. Like just recently I reached out to Jonathan Mannion and just asked him for his number and just called him right after that. And on that conversation, you know, during that phone call, I just asked him for, you know, what he thinks about this and what he thinks about that and how do I do this and how do I do that and, you know, how do I get my foot in the door with these other people at this high level? So, you know, with all those things, staying up, being prepared, not being afraid to ask for help, those are my three ways of just mastering my craft. So, Kaito, every champion has that mantra, you know, that that saying they live by or that sign that they slap before they leave the locker room you know is there is there a mantra a phrase a reminder you know that you that you live by something that you that you think about all the time what's your champion's mantra man my champion mantra is i have two is that all right yeah let's do it one would be you can do it and the other one would be figure it out. That's fucking dope. Yeah, figure it out. Yeah. Like, that's like the yin yang. Yeah, because it's like. You could do it, figure it out. Figure it out is, is why I say figure it out is because, like, if you're in a situation where you're behind like if you're in a situation situation where you don't have the tools or think you don't have the tools for something like there's always a way around it you can figure it out there's there's you know fucking figure it out so Kaito, i want to thank you so much my brother for taking the time to step into the trophy room and tell your truth, man. Really appreciate you. I appreciate you for having me, man. This means a lot, for real. Of course. Appreciate you, bro. My bro. You always have to keep going to another level. So I stand on the shoulders of my successes and my trophies, but I don't sleep in the trophy room. No, no. No, no. No sleep.